was one thing that you'd want them to know most about you and your relationship with guns. Not all Jews hate guns. Welcome to Trigger Discipline, firearms knowledge for the novice, curious, and the experienced. We're your hosts, Nick and Pete. We believe that firearms don't have to be dangerous and terrifying. Firearms are not only a vital tool in our world, but they can be safely enjoyed with just the littlest of effort by the user. Welcome to another episode of Trigger Discipline. I'm your host, Nick. When you think about Judaism and gun control, what comes to mind? Do you think of anti-gun politicians like Michael Bloomberg and Bernie Sanders? Or do you think about how millions of Jews might not have died during World War II at the hands of Hitler? As one of the oldest groups of people, Jews have faced persecution and violence for thousands of years, and yet there still seems to be an anti-gun mentality attached to people of the Jewish faith. To help clarify this perceived conflict of interest and provide better insight, we've asked award-winning Second Amendment advocate, author, and public speaker Yehuda Reimer, or as most of you might know him, the Pew Pew Jew, on the show. Welcome to the show, Yehuda, and thanks for taking the time to talk to us. To kick things off, can you tell us a little about a little bit about your backstory, how you became the Pew Pew Jew, your work for the Second Amendment, and how and your work as an author? Uh, yeah, well, I grew up in Los Angeles, um, so don't please don't hold that against me. But you know, I grew up in Los Angeles, and my my beliefs are strong. My I, I'm an unashamed Orthodox Jew. Uh, if you want to know where my politics stand, I grew up with Ben Shapiro. Um, I've known him for 30 something years. So I call myself like a Ben Shapiro disciple. Uh, I'm unashamed of what I believe in. I'm a social, I'm a social conservative, a fiscal conservative. I'm, I'm unashamed and, and mm-hmm. I'm not afraid to talk about my beliefs. Uh, I, I grew up in an apolitical home where firearms were never discussed. And, uh, you know, going through life, I always thought the only people allowed to own firearms were law enforcement, military, and bad guys. Eventually, my, a good buddy of mine called me. He's like, hey, man, do you want to go shooting with me? And I, I jumped at the opportunity. And while at the range, it was like right out of a movie, he like unrolled this bag and was like, shotgun shotgun ar ar handgun handgun and i'm like oh my god who are you and what happened to the like guy i've always known um i got the bug i bought my first gun uh i i was married out of the house two kids and my parents found out that i owned a gun and they went we're talking about chernobyl like nuclear meltdown and that led me to think, you know, how, how, how can I educate my children? How can I basically shut my parents up in the matter of speaking um, in order to show them that, look, I am responsible. All guns are our tools. So I found the Eddie Eagle program, which is great. But the problem with the Eddie Eagle program is all it does is talk about uh, what to do if you find the gun somewhere it's not supposed to be. Well, although very important and they do a great job at that, there's clearly – a lot more to firearms safety than just that. So I've always been uh, very interested in uh, creative writing. And I set out to write a book, not thinking I'd ever get published. And I wrote it on my iPhone, on my notes. On the iPhone, sent it to a buddy of mine in the LAPD. He absolutely loved it, but he tore it to shreds because um, I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. And he really gave me just amazing constructive criticism. So five years after I finished writing it, uh, a lot of heartache, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into it. A lot of rejection. God, a lot of rejection. But I finally got my first book published. And three years after that, I now have six books under my belt. That's awesome. Yeah, the Eddie the Eagle thing, I've looked at that a little bit too. And just like you said, it's like, because it's made by the NRA, they just play it safe because they don't want people to know that it's associated with the NRA. That's kind of what it seems like to me. But Yeah, I mean, you know, look, the Eddie Eagle has been the NRA's flagship educational tool for 30 years and it, or 25 years, something like that. And, you know, I'm not going to take away from the good it's done. I mean, it, it's an, 
an amazing tool. The problem, again, is that it only touches on what to do if you find a gun somewhere it's not supposed to be. There's nothing about ha having a healthy respect for your guns, making sure they're locked up, range rules, uh, you know, ear and eye protection, four cardinal rules of gun safety, and there's so much more to gun safety than just the Eddie Eagle. So that's why, again, I wrote my book. So now that we know a little bit about you, can you take some time to explain how, even though our discussion today is focusing around Judaism, what we will discuss can have a benefit to listeners regardless of their religion? Yeah, I mean, anything I'm going to talk about, although I'm coming from an uh, Orthodox Jewish perspective, um, really does translate to a any religion, any group. It, you know, the Second Amendment is for everyone. It, it doesn't make a difference what kind of background you have, whether you're, you know, if you're gay or not, if you're Jewish or not, non-Jewish, Christian, Catholic, Muslim, I mean, it doesn't make a difference. If you're an American and you're a citizen of the country, you have a right to defend your life. You have a right to defend your life in any country, but I'm saying pertaining to the Second Amendment, um, it's for everyone. So obviously if, if the question, if some of the questions are going to be geared at the Jewish perspective, yes, you know, I'll be able to, it, it, that will be as a Jewish answer. But otherwise, mo I mean, most what most of what I say and talk about really is for everyone to listen to. So, yeah, I mean, just to start off, like, so I kind of went through some of the things that I've seen online about why Jews don't, you know, quote unquote, like guns. Um, one of the first things was kosher eating and hunting. Like they don't need to use guns because they don't want to, it's not kosher to kill an animal through hunting. What are, I guess, what are your thoughts on that? Well, it's a hundred percent true. You know, Jews do not hunt. Uh, we don't hunt because we do not believe um, that's the proper way to kill an animal, at least for food. Now I'm a hundred percent pro hunting. Um, I will support hunting conservation because I think it's incredibly important. But as a Jew, um, I will not go hunting unless there is a little more room to say, you know, I live in Texas and there's a huge feral hog problem. So if someone, if one of my buddies says, hey, man, do you want to come hang out tonight and just pop off 30, 40 pigs in a the night, then there's more room for that because it's not a matter of, it, that's a matter of pest control more than, you know, hunting. Um, that said, I mean, yeah, Jew, Jews have to prepare their food, have to slaughter the animal based on Jewish law. We can get into that, but that's like an entire podcast in itself. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we, we have to prepare any kind of chicken or meat or venison, whatever it is, based on uh traditional Jewish dietary laws and slaughtering procedures. So because hunting doesn't fall under that, I might be, I might go and shoot a deer either with a gun or a bow. And even though a deer is technically a kosher animal, I would not be allowed to eat that animal. But if I got a deer and I slaughtered it according to Jewish tradition, then yes, I can have venison. That's not a problem. Um, I've actually had venison, and it's delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, you know, Jews who, like I said, I'm not going to say I'm anti-hunting at all. I can definitely see the benefits of it. I can understand uh, conservation versus preservation. Um, I can understand all of that uh, in terms of hunting. But, you know, Jews, when, okay, when I'm talking about Jews, also keep in mind, I'm coming from the Orthodox Judaism, you know, for any of the listeners out there. Um, I am an Orthodox Jew. There's a lot of, I, I have friends who are Reformed and Conservative Jews who are really big hunters, and but they don't necessarily follow the laws completely, so mm -hmm. they don't have a problem with it. So anything I'm talking about um, in, terms of, in terms of the Jewish faith, I will, I, I'm coming from an Orthodox perspective unless otherwise specified. Okay. It's kind of Staying on the hunting thing, I guess, do you see, do you see the, you know, what you're just saying about eating a hunted animal, not being kosher. Do you see that being used as a tactic to keep Jewish people away from gun ownership in general? Not really. Okay. Um, 
just because as we're all very well aware of, and I'm sure we've all seen the meme a hundred times, the founding fathers didn't come off a hunting trip. They came off of liberating a nation and, and right. beginning a new nation. So um, any Jews like, oh, well, you know, we shouldn't have guns because we don't, Jews don't hunt. I'm like, well, you're an idiot because guns are not made were the, the second amendment wasn't designed for hunters it was designed for free americans to preserve our republic so um anyone who uses that as an excuse either hasn't studied history or is just flat out lie mm -hmm. and that's good to see because yeah like a lot of people i mean if they're just getting into the subject you know maybe someone's thinking about converting to judaism you know, they'll, they might see some of that same stuff that I saw online that doesn't even go into what you talked about there. And they're just going to think, Oh, guns are bad. I can't use guns anymore because of the whole hunting, hunting issue. Yes. We, we definitely frown upon hunting. Although I would, I mean, everyone has their tests in life and I can't even begin to tell you what kind of trigger finger I have to go hunting. Um, but you know, um, I, I won't do it because the law prohibits me from going hunting. And if someone invites me to do feral hog hunting, again, there's a little more leeway to do something like that because it's considered more pest control versus hunting, hunting for food. So, you know, if someone is looking to convert to Judaism, unfortunately, with the, me with the media and the access to the uh, uh, copious amounts of knowledge out there they might find the wrong definition and they might find people who will twist history to fit their narrative mm -hmm. kind of keeping on the kosher thing so one of the other things i saw was talking about firearm restrictions you know and this goes you know everybody has a different opinion you know ranging from any gun law is an infringement you know all the way to you know, you shouldn't have guns at all, you know, and there's a wide variety of opinions um, between. But one of the things that I read was it makes more, I, mean, I don't want to say it makes more sense to people that are Jews because it, pro it you know, this can kind of be applied to everything. But specifically how I'm talking to you, um, as far as making things kosher, there's rules that you put in place to restrict your diet um, that can make things kosher. And the argument there then gets applied to guns where, you know, if we as a people can put rules in place to make things kosher and still have them, then we should be able to put rules in place for firearms and make them okay. You know, you know, like it might make sense to have magazine limits or universal background checks or things like that. Right. But, but the one thing has nothing to do with the other. That's, that's mm -hmm. the problem. Dietary laws, kosher laws, I mean, we've had that for thousands of years. Uh, that's part of Jewish culture. Guns, I mean, it's not like using a gun is prohibited. Uh, there was a huge rabbi, one of the leading rabbis in the world, came out, um, was it like a, three weeks ago, a month ago, and said, you know, if you're a Jew, you should be carrying a gun. And I'm, par I'm paraphrasing, but mm -hmm. uh, he basically said that, yeah, you are allowed to be carrying a gun. So guns are not looked at as as um, as something that's bad necessarily. Uh, you know, one, one thing I'm always asked a, a lot, they're like, well, you're an Orthodox Jew. And, you know, one of the commandments, one of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not kill. And I'm like, no, it's not. And they're like, wait, what? I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, show me where the commandment says thou shalt not kill. And they, they they pull it up in whatever iPhone app. I'm like, okay, that's a very bad translation of the commandment. They're like, what do you mean? Right. I'm like, well, <laughs> the actual Hebrew word talking about that specific commandment is lo tirzach. And that means thou shalt not murder. Mm -hmm. Then nowhere. Nowhere does it say thou shall not kill. Uh, we are clearly allowed to kill someone if they are coming to kill us. It says that straight out in the Bible. Um, oh, when I talk about the Bible, also for your listeners, I'm talking about the Old Testament, not mm -hmm. the New Testament, just in case people uh, you know, 
figure or can't figure that out. But yeah, it, nowhere does it say you cannot kill. It says you shall not murder. So that said, limiting. I, I just I don't see a a connection between kosher and you know like guns. I mean, it's two totally different things. Kosher is a diet a, a diet bunch of dietary laws that we've been following for thousands of years. Gun control is a, a way to take my right to defend myself or my family mm -hmm. away from me. Yeah, and, and like to be perfectly honest, like a lot of these things that I, I read, they're you know, it's clear from the very get go that the article or you know whatever I'm reading online is against guns. You know, and they're, they're right. trying to they're trying to apply it to your faith um, and people who might be interested in your faith to try to convince pretty much people to be against guns is how I'm looking at it. And every side has to, or, you know, every argument has two sides of the story, but that's, right. I mean, yeah, I'm glad that's, you know, that's why I'm asking these questions. I don't, I don't want it to seem like I'm, Oh, you know, I'm just assuming Judaism prohibits this or does this and this and this, but no, uh, I know no. it's out there. So I'm glad that you're, you're able to put your perspective on it. Yeah. It, it's like I said, you know, we, we don't look down upon guns. Uh, we had, you know, when, when King Saul was killed in battle and King David took over, um, his first thing was the children of Judah must learn the song of the bow. And he's talking about when a great, when a, when the great leader of uh, the Jews die, Jews need to be able to defend themselves because we're weakened at that point when our leader dies. So we have to be able to defend themselves. And that means learning the bow. Well, mm -hmm. I would say the bow is somewhat of the, the AR-15 of the time. So, yeah, learning the song of the bow. Uh, when Jacob was meeting uh, his brother, right, he did three things. He sent presents over and gifts. He sent, he prayed to God and he prepared for war. Uh, you know, Jew, a Jewish warrior mentality has been with us for, for thousands of years. We, we've had some pretty fierce warriors over the years. And to say that, oh, you know, the the Bible, the Old Testament saying that, oh, you cannot own guns because it's kind of like kosher. Those are people just literally grasping for straws, trying to make a point that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So this next one, this one was seemed pretty, I don't know, like <laughs> this one, I guess. I mean, it applies to everybody, but for some reason, it seems to be specifically applied to Judaism in this in this article that I wrote, read, but it said that the reason that Jews don't like guns is because they want to live in a utopian society. And, you know, I'm just like, I think everybody would want to live in a utopian society, right? I mean, it's not just going to be limited to one group of people, but I think everybody's smart enough to realize that evil exists in this world. But I don't know. Have you ever heard anything like that associated? I, I have never heard in my life that... Jews want to live in a utopian society. I mean, you know, we do we we do pray for the Messiah to come, and mm -hmm. you know everything should be all hunky dory when he comes. Um, but who doesn't, like you said, who doesn't want to live in a utopian society? Right. I wish I wish I lived in a society where I can go out with my family without a gun on me, not worry about anything, take my kids to a park or Dave and Buster's and not have to have my head on the swivel. Unfortunately, we don't live in a world like that. I, the, the concept of, yeah, I've never, I've never heard, I've never heard that in my life before, that Jews are anti-gun because they want to live in a utopian society. I mean, again, I, I just feel that's one of the things that people are just grasping for straws and, and trying to twist whatever they can, mm -hmm. you know, in order to come up with a narrative that will paint gun owners and guns in a bad light. Yeah. I mean, again, it's like, you know, I'm reading some of this stuff and it's just, it's almost unbelievable. So, you know, and I can say that, but nobody's going to really listen to me. So it's nice <laughs> having your, your thoughts on the subject. Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to get into this one. Cause this one is like the meme that you see everywhere. It's the uh, broad statement that the gun, the pro gun people will, We'll always say that, uh, you know, it's the Hitler, the Holocaust thing. Hitler banned guns. Everyone was defenseless. 
that's why the Holocaust happened. You know, we'll say that, or, you know, not we, I'll just say gun, pro-gun people in general will make that argument. And then anti-gun people will come back and say, oh no, Hitler actually made it easier to use guns, which is true. Or he made it, you know, easier to access guns. But then he also limited it to certain types of people, you know, certain groups of people. Jews were one group of people that didn't have more access to guns at that time, right? Right. So it seems like once we bring that point back up, the anti-gun person that we're talking to just does what they always do, stops talking and doesn't listen anymore. Is there anything we can add to that or that you would want to add to that just to maybe keep the conversation going or just let pro-gun people that aren't Jewish be more knowledgeable? I mean, look, mo- most of the time, from what I, from my understanding, from people I've talked to who are not Jewish and that are pro-gun, you know, you look, you look at history and you look specifically um, when Hitler comes to power in 33, where he passes, you know, the, the Nuremberg laws and, you know, Jews are considered not real Germans. So they get their, first they have to register their guns and their guns are taken away. Then by the time the Holocaust rolls around, they really don't have a way to defend themselves. But take for a second, the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, right? Mordechai and Alevich, who was the leader of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, they were able to smuggle guns in and they were able to steal guns, uh, kill Germans, take their weaponry, learn to use the MP40s and and the, um, oh God, what's the bolt action that they used to, I, I, whatever the bolt action was that the Germans used, I forgot. But, you know, the the, mm. the Lugers, they were able to build a, a real arsenal to the point where the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, I mean, the Nazis almost opened a third front in order to quell the, just destroy this uprising. The, the Jews of Warsaw lasted longer, or well, let me rephrase, the couple thousand of Jews who fought against the Nazis in the uprising lasted longer than both the Polish and French armies did. So anyone who says that, the, oh, Hitler made it easier to access, well, they're right. But at the same time, he also restricted gun ownership to a lot of people, including Jews. Mm-hmm. And but once the Jews got hands on their guns, I mean, it was a game changer. Yeah, that seems they, like... they, they put up one hell of a fight. Yeah, and that's like the other thing that they always say is like, well, you know, even if they would have had guns, it, you know, it wasn't going to stop the inevitable. But like you were just saying, maybe it didn't stop the inevitable, but it sure as hell made it take a lot longer for them to do what they were going to do. Right. Look, anyone, I'm not saying, I'm not saying like you just said, right? I'm not saying that 6 million Jews wouldn't have been killed, right? Mm-hmm. Do I know why the Holocaust happened? No. And to even think to question God on why it happened is, is blasphemous, right? So I'm not going to question God's motives. Um, I'm not going to question why 6 million died. But what I will, but what I would point out is there was some fierce Jewish resistance, whether it was the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, whether it was Abba Kovner and the Vilna Partisans, whether it was, you know, the Bielski Partisans made famous from the movie Defiance, right? There was a lot of legitimate, fierce Jewish vengeance that was brought on against the Nazis. And they did it with firearms, explosives, you know, guerrilla tactics. This is something that has been proven. So you're right. I can't say that what why I can't give a reason why the Holocaust happened or what God's plans were. But not all Jews were led like sheep to slaughter. Mm-hmm. And anyone who would say that, oh, you know, the gun control made it easier, Jews just happened to turn in their guns. I mean, just total BS. Thanks. Kind of moving on to a different subject. This is like another one of those things that I read and I had never heard it before until I was researching the subject, but it's about the NRA. So feel free to give me your own personal opinion of the NRA if no you problem. want, because I'm more than happy to hear it. Um, I probably agree with some of the things too, but specifically, you know, I couldn't find any concrete example of it, but 
they're saying the NRA was anti-Semitic. And I, like I said, I couldn't find anything along those lines. I don't know if that's something that you've heard. I have been in this industry now for a little over three years um, in the firearms industry. I came in in 2017 with my first book. I have yet to witness any anti-Semitism from anybody. Now, let me be clear. Are there anti-Semites out there? I have no doubts. There's Mm anti-Semites all over the place. In this industry, I have had nothing but support and nothing but advice and fairness and, you know, working my way up the ladder and becoming a, God, and I I hate to use this word, but I I hate to use the word influencer because like, (laughs) I don't think I, I don't think I really am an influencer. Right. Working my way up and and the type of people in the industry that I deal with on a day to day basis now are some pretty big names. And again, there has been no anti-Semitism. It's actually been the opposite. Uh, Everyone sees me walking around with my uh, camo yarmulke that I have. And, you know, everyone is like, Oh, wow, that's so cool. Where can we get one? It's so nice to see, you know, a Jewish guy uh, defending the Second Amendment rather than all the moronic politicians who happen to be Jewish trying to take our gun rights away. It's been nothing but support. And um, I have had the NRA call me for certain things. And I, again, I don't know where you read that, but I, I think it's, it's just one of the things that the left tends to paint pictures when, when you know, oh, the NRA is bad, they're anti-Semites. Yeah, really, why? Just mm-hmm. like, oh, Trump is Hitler, right? Yeah. It's, it's total BS. Give me examples. Don't, don't tell me he's – don't tell me the NRA is a bunch of anti-Semites. Give me examples where they have been outwardly anti-Semitic. And if you can show me real examples – I will have no problem calling them out. But until you can show me examples of them being anti-Semitic, I mean, I look, I, I think the NRA is in a, I mean, but not to get into the NRA, but you know, like you said, you know, like they're, they're, they're taking a pretty big beating from most of the gun industry at the moment. Right. Um, it, it does seem like they are trying to slowly, try to fix things. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, but, you know, I won't give my money to the NRA, um, not until a lot more has been done. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a big firearms policy coalition guy, mm-hmm. Second Amendment Foundation guy, um, and that's where I'll give my money to. But to say that the NRA is anti-Semitic, I think, is just an absolutely horrendous and moronic thing to say. Yeah, I mean, that's... Like you said, I mean, you know, I read that and then I'm like looking for examples that prove that they're anti-Semitic and it's just, you can't find any. And yeah, sure, I'm 100%. There's probably some anti-Semites that are members of the NRA, but there's anti-Semites that are members of every, you know, organization on the left and the right in in this right. country. To me, yeah, they're just, it's it's probably more or less a smear tactic because they're they're attacking the NRA and... I think it's kind of funny because, you know, like the NRA is hurting a lot right now and some of it's self-inflicted, but it's funny that the anti-gun people keep attacking them right now. And it's like, they're really not the ones that you should be attacking. Not that we want to let that secret out, but (laughs) right. exactly. (laughs) It's like, keep going. They're not really doing anything anyway right now, but I like that. So I guess what is, what is, one thing as a, a man of the Jewish faith that you would want to tell other gun owners that are some other religion was one thing that you'd want them to know most about you and your relationship with guns. Not all Jews hate guns. <laughs> yeah. Um, despite the biggest gun grabbers in the U S government being Jewish, right? You know, you have Diane Feinstein, you have Blumenthal, Bloomberg, um, 
God, there's so many. Boxer. I mean, well, she's not there anymore, but there's just tons and tons of people who are anti-gun who are trying to restrict gun rights. Um, keep in mind they're Jews in name only. Mm-hmm. Right? That liberalism, leftism, that is their religion, uh, not Judaism. They just happen to be Jewish. So if I were, you know, it's something that I do talk about constantly with other people is that, you know, not all Jews are anti-gun. And what I'm trying to do under the moniker of the Pew Pew Jew and getting out there and speaking to people is to show the country that, no, look, I'm an Orthodox Jew. I'm hell bent on saving the Second Amendment. You know, to think that all Jews hate guns is a ridiculous notion. And um, it's not true. Yeah. I mean, it's it's basically just like everything else. With any, group of per, any group of people, there's going to be people that don't like guns. There's going to be people that like guns. And there's going to be a bunch of people in the middle. Um, I'm just really glad that we had the opportunity to talk about and let let people know, like you said, not not all Jews hate guns, and you don't have to be, you know, anti-Jewish to like guns at the same time. So, right. help it helps people who are Jewish out, I think, and it helps people who are just curious about it, like I was. Yeah, yeah, like I said, not all Jews hate guns. Well, I guess yeah. That, I mean, that's pretty much all I have, unless um, if you have anything that you want to talk about, any new products and any new thing that you want to bring up um yeah i mean i have you know all my books i have six books out uh five of them are on firearms education including a joke book um i have my whole pew pew Jew brand that helps promote the second amendment and firearms ownership in a very fun way a lot of fun shirts and um mugs hats stuff like that uh, but you know, I just uh, I'm just out there fighting the good fight every day, just trying to make sure that our Second Amendment is safe and that it's not you know infringed upon. Awesome. And how can people, if you want them to get in touch with you, how can how do you want people to get in touch with you? Uh, the best way to do it is either you can email me through my website, which is thepewpewjew.com. Um, I do a lot of Instagram. Um, that's also a very good way to get in touch with me. Facebook, um, I have two accounts. One is private, and I highly recommend no one friend me because I probably will deny you uh, <laughs> if I don't know you. Uh, not being a jerk, but right. like I said, it, it's a private account for friends and family. It's common sense. Um, yeah. But I do, I, yeah, it's it's actually <laughs> it's actually funny. Anytime I do a podcast. Within like 24 hours of the podcast going live, I have 20 friend requests, and I'm like, nope, nope, don't know you, don't know you, don't know you, don't know you. You talked to me once before because you bumped into me and asked me for a picture. I appreciate the support, but we're not friends. I have a public page. Go to my public page. I will interact with you. <laughs> So, like I said, um, messaging me through my public page, I do check it a bunch of times a day. Instagram and email is the best way to get in touch with me. Yeah, your your meme game's on point on Instagram. I like it. I appreciate that. Awesome. Well, thanks again, and uh, we look forward to having you on again. Yeah, anytime. Let me know. Thank you for listening to Trigger Discipline. Follow us on Twitter. Instagram and Facebook. Links are in the description. You can view our website at triggerdiscipline.info or contact us with any suggestions or questions you have at contact at triggerdiscipline.info.